Ephesians chapter number four. Beginning with the 11th verse. And Christ gave gifts to people. He made some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to go and tell the good news, and some to have the work of caring for the teaching of God's people. Christ gave those gifts to prepare God's holy people for the work of serving, to make the body of Christ strong. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. For a few moments on today, I want to talk to you from the subject, a house in God's order. A house in God's order. Dottie Peoples stated, get your house in order. Do it today. Get your house in order. Do it right away. For Jesus is coming. No man knows where or when. Get your house in order. Because Jesus is coming back again. Do you believe that on today? But see, oftentimes, we find ourselves in a place of uncertainty or indifference when it comes to our brothers and our sisters. In the midst of uncertainty and indifference, we often lean on our own understanding without truly understanding the facts. Sometimes we don't understand the full picture. And sometimes we even go with the, what is popular rather than seeking God and looking for what is right in the word of God in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, this can lead to strife and division. Furthermore, we understand that a house divided cannot and will not stand. But Jesus is the head of this house. And because Jesus is the head of this house, we operate in his power, his purpose, and we are striving to make an impact. I come by here to let you know that you have been selected. And because you have been selected, my brothers and my sisters, you must stay connected. Amen. Jesus said, I am the vine. And you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So if we are going to build a house on today, we must be connected. We must strive to remain connected. And if we are connected and remain connected, we will produce much edible, nourishing truth. Because you know our fruit ain't this way. We must come to the realization that nothing can separate us from the slave from the love of Christ. We've all had trouble. But guess what? 
He still loves us. We've all experienced times of brokenness, but he still loves us. We have all had times when we have disconnected ourselves, but he still loves us. We will be persecuted. We will be hungry. We will be destitute and we will face danger. But God still loves us. It says nothing can separate us from the love of God. It is our mandate to build up the house. We all may come from different places, but it is our mandate, Brother Terry, to build the house. We may not always agree on things, but it is our mandate to build the house. I may disappoint you, and you may disappoint me, but it is still our mandate to build up the house of God. We must begin to realize as we endure that we have hope in Jesus Christ. And if we truly understand the phases of discipleship, we know that in the beginning of all of this, we were spiritually dead. And it was Jesus that came and picked us up and turned us on the ground and gave us purpose. And we can boldly give God praise on today because we understand it is Him that brought us out of darkness into His marvelous light. And we understand that God's mercy and His grace are great. And no matter what, He loves us unconditionally. Our brothers and our sisters, we have a mandate. To build the house. And we have to understand we all may be different. But we have been called together to walk together in unity. Yeah, yeah. We've all been selected by God. And individually and collectively we have a divine appointment. And it is our job to do our very best to live up to the expectations that God has placed upon us. We do this. Thinking around about being humble. By being gentle, by being patient with one another. And we do this by loving one another. We are bound together by the peace of the Holy Spirit. And we must take every chance that we get to maintain that peace. In the text. We understand that the essence of the gospel is not what we should do for God, but what he has done for us. The New Testament, like the Old Testament, contains many commands and requirements, many standards to be met, Many obligations to be fulfilled. However, as important as those standards and obligations may be, they are not the heart of Christianity. They are simply what God calls and enables us to do for His glory. In response, to get Simpson to what He has done for us. Begin by bringing back to remembrance what God has done through his son. 
The process of the believer, which Paul talks about in verses 1 through 6, is executed through the ministry of the gifts God has bestowed upon us. Yeah, yeah. He lets us know in verses 7 through 11 that every believer has been individually gifted. We have been gifted individually because we all have a different assignment. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean, Pastor? That means I should not be covered in your assignment. Yeah, yeah. And you should not be covered in mine. Because God intentionally has gifted us differently because we are the body of Christ. Everybody can't rush up in here and be a usher. Everybody can't run up in here and be a nurse. It would be chaos. But we've been gifted individually because we are the body of Christ. And let me throw this in parenthetically. None of us is the head. <laughs> Preach there, Mo. They'll do the best I can. He then he goes on to sh to to show how Christ obtained the rights to the gifts, and lastly, he mentions some of the special gifts that God had bestowed upon the proper personnel. He talks about the apostles and the prophets. If we go to 1 Corinthians verse 12, 28, Paul says God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers. This statement adds weight not only to the idea of divine calling, but also the chronological significance. Mm -hmm. In the giving of these gifts to the men and the women of the church, the first classes of gifted men, women and men, apostles and prophets, were given four basic responsibilities to lay a foundation of the church, to maintain and upkeep the foundation of the church, to receive and declare the revelation of God's word, and to give confirmation of that word through living obediently. But next, he talks about evangelists. Evangelists are in place in God's plan for the advancement of the kingdom. Evangelists, per the text, are those who live the good news and proclaim the good news. See how I say that? We are to live the good news and proclaim. Not do what we want to do and proclaim. Amen. Amen. The specific term evangelist is used only in this text in Ephesians. In Acts 21, verse 8, where Philip is called an evangelist, and Timothy in 2 Timothy 4 5. No, they were called also to do the works of evangelists. The work of the evangelists is to preach and teach and, ex and explain the good news of salvation to those who have yet not believed. He or she is a proclaimer of salvation by the grace through faith in the Son of God. So the evangelist's job is to go forth to the unbeliever. Then you have the pastors and the teachers. Pastor, translated in the Greek, means shepherd. It emphasizes the care, protection, 
and leadership of the man and woman of God for the flock. Being a teacher is a primary function of the pastor. Though teaching can be identified as a ministry by itself, Teaching in this scripture is intertwined with pastoring. Yes, yes, yes. As we see, Jesus gives specific spiritual gifts, and there are more to believers whose primary mission is to bring order and keep order in the house of the Lord. With all that said, what happens when God provides the proper personnel to get his house in order? Number one, there should be a maturing of the saints. Be ye holy for I am holy. Number two, there should be unity amongst the saints. Oh, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And number three, there should be a perseverance of the saints. We should be holding on to the bloodstained banner to the end. See, the song writer says, the road is rough. And the going is tough. And the hills are hard to climb. See, my mama know I started out a long time ago. But there is no doubt in my mind because I've decided Yes. Have you decided? Yes. I've decided. Have you decided to make Jesus my choice in the midst of my years? I made up my mind that Jesus is my choice in the midst of all my tears. I made up my mind that Jesus. In my choice, in the midst of uncertainty, I made up my mind that Jesus is my choice. When I felt like growing in the town, I made up my mind that Jesus is my choice. When my body was full of sickness, I made up my mind that Jesus. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
are yes. unity. Yes. We shall yes. recover yes. in all yes. reconciliation. Yes. We shall yes. recover yes. in all. Yes. Are you listening yes. to what I'm saying? Joy. We shall recover in all. Peace of mind. We shall recover in all our families. We shall recover in all our finances. We shall recover in all our health. We shall recover in all. The songwriter said, I'm reaping a harvest. God promised me. Take back what the devil stole from me. And I rejoice. 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 Today, because I said, I will.
do sixty five. Because these gifts came with a price. Yeah. See, the Bible says, the exception, if you quote, tell me if I'm wrong, he gave to 42 generations. Mm -hmm. To redeem us. Take a name that came with a price. They marched him. Judgment hall. His back looked like chop meat. He had lost so much blood. He shouldn't have even made it to the cross. It came with a price. This order came with a price. They marched him. Because it came with the price. The door of the church. 